Hot Girl had sex with multiple men and cursed them to get pregnant. In the Mortuary Collection, we follow a paperboy peddling through Raven's End, an eerie town. He reaches a haunting house where papers pile up untouched. Curiosity gets the better of him, leading to a chilling encounter with the enigmatic mortician Montgomery Dark. The boys attempt to snap a photo through the mail slot, sets off a hair-raising chain of events. Fumbling with his camera's strap, he encounters Montgomery, but fear grips him, leaving his camera behind. Afterward, Montgomery presides over a boy's funeral and crosses paths with Sam. A woman intrigued by his library of intriguing books chronicling his client's tales. Eager to join the mortuary, Sam urges Montgomery to share one of these chilling stories. He obliges, recounting a spine-tingling incident from the 1950s. At a lively party, Emma pilfers wallets, stashing away valuables like a pocket watch. Investigating a strange noise from a medicine cabinet, she unwittingly unleashes terror. A tentacled horror lurks within, causing panic as she struggles to contain it. Despite her attempts to escape, a terrifying demise awaits her, concluding with bone-chilling consequences. Sam, while acknowledging that the story isn't bad, suggests it could benefit from a twist. Montgomery, the storyteller, reassures her and mentions having more tales. However, before delving into another narrative, he presents a document for Sam to formalize her employment at the mortuary. As they walk through the foyer adorned with pictures of past morticians, Sam inquires about a specific story involving a deceased boy, but Montgomery deflects, citing its unsettling nature. Undeterred, Sam requests another tale, leading Montgomery to recount a story set in a 1960s university. The narrative revolves around Jake, a charismatic frat boy advocating for women's empowerment, distributing condoms on campus, and sharing plans for a party later. The tale takes a turn when Jake's frat mate, Connor, offers a condom to a timid-looking woman named Sandra, prompting Jake's intervention and a surprising revelation about his motives. Jake is taken aback when Sandra confesses that she's there for the same purpose, so he stresses that he was only joking. Before returning to his booth, Jake invites Sandra to his fraternity's party. Sandra tells him that she might attend. As Sandra walks to her class, she passes by a billboard filled with photos of missing male students. When Jake sees Sandra arrive at the party, he immediately takes her to his room. As they engage in intimate activities, Sandra cautions him about a potential dark side, revealing that she might be a serial killer. She then guides Jake to the bed disrobes after concealing an object in her skirt, and slowly approaches Aida to top him. She discloses having a surprise for him. Revealing the item, Jake is disappointed to find it's a condom. Though reluctantly complying, Jake later requests Sandra to turn around during their encounter. Taking advantage of her distraction, he discreetly removes the condom and continues their intimate act. The next morning, Jake awakens to find Sandra absent, leaving only her phone number written on the mirror. Attempting to erase it, he discovers the numbers are still faintly visible. Suddenly experiencing discomfort in his stomach, Jake heads to the bathroom, where he vomits. Upon Connor's arrival, he notices rashes on Jake and advises him to seek medical attention. At the clinic, Dr. Harold Kubler prescribes penicillin for Jake's rashes but detects something unusual in his file, prompting a further examination request. Hearing peculiar sounds emanating from Jake's abdomen, Kubler excuses himself to investigate. Perusing his own file, Jake is astonished to discover that he's pregnant. Back in his dorm, Jake attempts to terminate the pregnancy with a pill, but the effort results in vomiting. Desperate, he contacts Sandra, though he struggles with the wrong numbers due to a deleted digit. Once connected, he urges her to meet him, revealing the unexpected turn of events. Leaving the frat house, Jake encounters a celebration of his supposed 67th sexual encounter, a sacred number for the Brotherhood. As they lift him to hang his name on the mantle, Jake's water breaks, spraying his frat mates. Released, he rushes to Sandra's house, where her father, Ralph, reacts with frustration at the sight of Jake's growing belly. Sandra's mother, Margaret, 
contacts Sandra, preparing for the unexpected arrival of the infant. As Sandra enters, Jake mistakenly accuses her of causing his pregnancy. Sandra promptly corrects him, stressing that he is accountable for not using protection. Jake apologizes, revealing that he used to be fat, and he elaborates on his physical transformation, admitting that his enhanced appearance coincided with a decline in his personality. Sandra looks at him sympathetically before walking away to organize a date with another man, highlighting Jake's realization that his attractiveness has been accompanied by a worsening personality, feeling the fetus move inside him. Jake turns to Ralph for information on childbirth. Margaret clarifies that the baby will exit the same way it entered. Suddenly, Jake screams in agony as the infant forcefully emerges from him. His reproductive organ explodes, tearing open his abdomen, and blood splatters across the room. Margaret deftly delivers the baby to the nursery, but accidentally triggers a whistle toy, unleashing a cacophony of cries as all the infants wake up. In the commotion, one baby extends Talon skyward, adding an eerie twist to the scene. Impressed with the narrative's elements, Sam praises the tale. Montgomery then guides Sam to the embalming room, unveiling the seemingly perfect corpse of a young woman. Although Sam admires her appearance, Montgomery points out traces of magnesium in her upper palate, a common indicator of catatonic states. He proceeds to recount the story of Carol Peters and Wendell Owens, detailing their wedding ceremony's ominous turn and the struggles that unfold in their married life. Upon the elevator's arrival, Mrs. Avery boards while Wendell opts for the stairs. At home, Wendell diligently prepares a blended meal for his catatonic wife, Carol. Kubler's examination. Carol is deemed stable. But Wendell, concerned about mounting bills, learns she's only a year left to live. Kubler leaves pain medication, hinting at the possibility of hasting Carol's demise. That evening, Wendell dresses up for a candlelight dinner, offering Carol an Arctic hair figurine. Frustrated by her continued lack of response, he mixes the pills into her food, triggering an unexpected moment of responsiveness, rushing to free her restraints. Wendell attempts to pump her stomach after she vomits, only to discover in horror that her head has been impaled on the figurine, concluding the night in a gruesome and unexpected tragedy. Wendell reaches out to Kubler for assistance, but Kubler instructs him to dispose of Carol's body in the ocean. Struggling to fit Carol into her bridal chest, Wendell resorts to cutting her up. As he begins chopping her thigh, Carol suddenly moves and screams. Wendell stops her movements by removing a figurine from her head, eventually managing to fit the chopped body into the box. Shoving the trunk into the elevator, Wendell declines to hold the lift for a man, forcefully closing the doors and injuring his neighbor's hand. The elevator starts moving but unexpectedly halts before reaching the ground floor. Attempting to pry the doors open, Wendell is interrupted by Mrs. Avery, who offers to call the police. Despite Wendell's reassurance that the elevator will likely resume, Avery insists on summoning the police. As the doors close, he notices Carol's blood leaking from the box. Wendell's escape attempt through the hatch ends in a slip, and in frustration he throws his wedding ring. The bridal chest unlocks, but as Wendell tries to open it, the elevator descends further than expected. Peering out the window, he envisions a happy life with Carol. Suddenly, Carol's decaying corpse emerges, placing the wedding ring on Wendell and compelling him to kiss her. When the elevator doors open, the police discover Wendell on the floor, reciting wedding vows, gripping his wedding album. Montgomery informs Sam that Wendell has lost his sanity and is confined to Kirksdale Mental Asylum. Despite Sam's complaint about predictable stories, Montgomery asserts the timeless message that no evil deed goes unpunished. As Montgomery guides the boy's coffin toward the cremation chamber, Sam intervenes, admitting that she wasn't genuinely applying for a job and revealing her connection to the deceased boy, Logan blaming herself for his death. Pleading with Montgomery to let her see Logan one last time, he compassionately opens the coffin for her. 
Sam proceeds to recount the night Logan died, describing how she was babysitting him while watching a horror movie called The Babysitter Murders. She shares the message from Dr. Coupler and his wife, Deborah, instructing her to ensure Logan's sleep and take care of herself. As Sam checks on Logan and prepares food, a radio broadcast interrupts the movie, oblivious to a broken window. Sam heads outside to dispose of garbage, unaware of the potential danger. Returning, she encounters a man with a head wound in the living room, prompting her to grab a cleaver from the kitchen. The tension escalates as the man appears behind her, causing her to drop the weapon in shock. In the midst of the unfolding chaos, the disoriented man seeks Sam's help as she tends to his wound. Growing increasingly agitated at the ringing phone, he becomes distressed when Deborah's call reveals the escape of a psychopath known for mutilating children from the asylum. Detecting danger as the man eyes Logan's toy, Sam reacts by forcing his hand into a meat grinder. Undeterred, the man retaliates, delivering a powerful kick that knocks Sam down. Despite her attempts to strike him with a meat pounder, he blocks her and extracts his mangled hand from the grinder. Sam, undeterred, rises and tries to stab him, but he deflects her with a chopping board. In a frenzied struggle, Sam bites off the man's ear as he screams over the phone with Deborah, still on the line, overpowering Sam. He slams her to the floor, punching her repeatedly. Concerned for Logan, Sam rushes to the boy's room upon hearing the man's screams, engaging in a fierce battle with the fire poker. Despite her valiant efforts, the man prevails, slamming her to the floor and searching for Logan. As the cubblers arrive, they find themselves unable to enter due to a door chain lock. The desperate man, now in a struggle for control, strangles Sam, who pleads for her life, insisting that he is not a killer. In the aftermath of the intense struggle, the man declares it's over, but Sam defiantly shoves him down the stairs. Regaining consciousness, he faces another assault as Sam drops a television on his head. Upon the cubbler's entrance, they recognize the deceased man as the babysitter. Shockingly, news reports reveal the escaped inmate to be a woman named Charlotte Gibbons, known as the Boggy Bay Tooth Fairy. Deborah panics as Logan remains missing, and their horror intensifies upon the gruesome discovery of his remains inside the oven. When Montgomery questions Charlotte about her presence at the mortuary, she extracts a tooth from Logan's remains, revealing her macabre collection. In an attempt to silence Montgomery, Charlotte stabs him, only to find him unyielding as embalming fluid leaks from his wound. Undeterred, Montgomery humorously informs Charlotte that she has secured the job, prompting her to flee. However, her escape attempts lead her back into the house. In a surreal encounter in the library, Montgomery reveals his shared past with Charlotte and the inescapable consequences they face within the house. As Montgomery stomps his cane, books fall, disclosing the extent of Charlotte's stories in the library. Dark spirits of children crawl out of the pages, attacking Charlotte when one bites her. The assault causes her to drop her tooth collection leading to excruciating pain as more spirits join in. Charlotte's demise is marked by a spirit grabbing a tooth and donning it. Montgomery, seemingly leaving the house, breathes a sigh of relief, but inexplicably explodes into dust. Inside the house, Charlotte revives, glimpsing her hideous face in the mirror. Shortly after assuming the role of the new mortician, Charlotte shares a tale with the paperboy. When the paperboy tries to depart, she dissuades him from leaving, mentioning that she is about to prepare dinner. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this video and want more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and let's continue this cinematic journey together here at Black's Movie Recaps. Thanks for watching.